Hi friends, so I wanted to, I was digging through some of my boxes looking for something the other day and I ran across this project that I put together probably five years ago and I wanted to bring it out and show you guys what it was because it's kind of cool. So I took this um, CPU cooler that was out of a server that was going to get scrapped at a place I used to work at. So I took this CPU cooler off and it has these really neat heat pipes blah, 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 marketing, marketing. So what I did with it is I put a 100 watt LED on the bottom of it. And this was an experiment to see, could you make an LED lamp? And this was, you know, five years ago, a 100 watt LED lamp was a thousand dollar adventure and you could buy the chip for 20 bucks. So I, um, I used some Arctic Silver Thermal Epoxy, which is not the same as Thermal Paste. So this epoxy, and this, this thing is permanent. And um, so anyway, I, I dug this out and I thought, you know, this is kind of interesting. Let me um, go ahead and fire it up on YouTube and show you guys you can absolutely make LED lights. Um, this runs, it really wants to see 30 volts at 3 amps. Um, I don't think my power supply can quite do it. I've got a bench power supply that's rated at 30 volts and 3 amps, so I can give it 90 watts. Um, you really need 35 you need a little more juice to get this thing at full capacity, but it it is bright as heck. And I'm planning on putting some of these together for my um, quarantine tanks because I'm sure as heck not going to spend the money on an Ecozotic. So without further ado, I'm going to turn down my voltage on my power supply and I'm going to kick this thing on. Now, I normally do not put this thing face up when I fire it because it's flipping bright. It's a 100 watt chip sitting on a CPU cooler. But here we go. And I'm probably going to regret doing this with it facing me. So that's 7 volts drawing 0.4 amps. And that's really too bright to actually look at directly. The camera is flashing. It doesn't like the thing. But mind you, this is a third of the voltage and hardly any of the amps. So we'll just go ahead and turn this up. This is 13 volts. And then we're going to come up. I can't quite push, um, I, I, I can't push 30 volts at 3 amps. The uh, power supply craps out at 17 volts and 3 amps, which means that I, I'm pulling a full 90 watts off this power supply. And just to illustrate how bright this is, I'm going to flip the lights off in this room and it's more than bright enough for the room. In fact, on camera, the room is still fully lit. And that, and that illustrates this thing is, it's like looking at an arc weld. So, you know, and if you think, oh, well, gosh, it must get hot. Well, let's find out how hot does it get? So I have my old iPhone 5S. And one of the things I have for my 5S is, you know the heck with this, we're going to, just throw a hat over it for now. So I have my old five iPhone 5S, and um, one of the things I bought for this was a FLIR 1, which is a thermal imaging camera. And All right, so I've got this FLIR 1 booted up, and I've got the application open, and the chip itself is 248 degrees. Something tells me that's a, I mean, that's the front side of this. And I'm going to maneuver this and hope that the GoPro actually can pick up the screen of this camera. And then the heat sink, and we'll just turn this. Oh, this is, this is getting kind of toasty. The back of the heat sink is 108, 100 and, you know, 100 degrees. So, you know, the heat sink is working. I'm not sure what the lifespan of this would be, but the heat sink is absolutely working. If you were to put a fan on it, it would probably last longer. You know, the chip itself is, again, it's stabilized at 248 degrees. Um, you know, that's higher. All, all these chips are supposed to have a low junction temperature. It's possible that I'm getting a weird reading because um, the FLIR 1 isn't really designed to read the temperature of lights, but it is an infrared camera. And then if we go off a little bit, we can see that, you know, the heat sink is doing its, doing its thing. And this is, this is heating up quite nicely. 
You know, it's not hot enough to burn, but you know, some um, a fan certainly wouldn't hurt it. So there you have it. This is what a CPU cooler looks like on a um, with a hundred watt um, LED on the back of it, and it makes sense. The CPU cooler is designed to deal with a 77 or 80 watt um, thermal dissipation uh, load or TDP. Um, so, hey, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this to be interesting and amusing.